I definitely don't think I was as organized and prepared as I could have been. Hopefully you'll be able to take on board some of my advice and learn from the mistakes that I made. I just had so much time. Don't end up like me where you just put all of your worksheets and leaflets into the same place in a big pile with no organization whatsoever and then you end up never looking at it again. Our garage has become the dumping place for all of my teaching stuff. I promise you being extra organized is really going to help you to be more productive. everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me then my name is Jen, otherwise known as Miss Ross and I am a Scottish primary teacher. Here on my YouTube channel I make a lot of different videos about my experiences as a teacher. Something that I get asked a lot by a lot of you guys who are thinking about doing teaching at uni or just about to start their degree is what can you be doing to make sure you're prepared for studying a degree in teaching. If you didn't already know I actually studied the four year BA course so I went into uni straight from school very young. I definitely don't think I was as organised and prepared as I could have been and let's just say I've learned a lot. Hindsight is a wonderful thing but there are definitely a few things that I wish I'd done from the start. So there are a few things in here that I wish I did that I want to pass on as advice to you guys as well as just some general tips for being organised and prepared and setting yourself up for your future career in teaching. Also just a little disclaimer in here I'm not really going to talk too much about placements in this video because I am hoping to put up another version of this solely focusing on placements very soon so if you're looking for advice on placements, don't worry, it is coming very soon. If you say so. <laughs> that was sorry being wide. It has been a little while since I was at uni but a lot of these tips I'm sure will still apply. As always I have my iPad here just so that I make sure I cover everything that I want to cover. So my very first piece of advice for any student really, it doesn't just need to be a teaching student but especially for us teaching students is to buy a planner. There are so many different planners available online you just have to go and check out what you think is going to work best for you. A lot of places now are starting to do student teaching planners which are focused on people that are university studying to be teachers so that's definitely something worth looking into. Make sure you write in all your important dates and deadlines and get organised now. Something I get asked about a lot by trainee teachers is how to maintain a work-life balance while you're at university and I would definitely say be quite strict with yourself and schedule the free time that you do have to make sure that you're allowing time for yourself to relax. Don't wait until placement comes around to start writing your assignments or else you will literally be hating your life having to do assignment work at the weekends. I promise you being extra organised and super picky about the time that you have is really going to help you to be more productive. My second tip is something that I really wish I did earlier on in my teaching career and that is to organise your digital resources. I would definitely recommend investing in some digital storage so get out there and buy yourself a new external hard drive and a pen drive with lots of storage on it. On my hard drive I have all kinds of different things saved from timetables that I've made up to lesson plans that I've made, video clips, powerpoints, worksheets. If you have spent time looking for or editing these resources then make sure you save them so you can reuse them or pass them on to others. As you can imagine you do tend to gather a lot of stuff so it's definitely important to try and have it organised from the start and I would say get into those habits early on when you start uni because your collection is just going to keep on growing. How you organise this is going to be down to personal preference. The way that I like to organise my digital resources is that I have lots of different folders. I tend to do it by level so in Scotland we have early level first level and second level. In England I believe it's KS1, KS2 so just depending on whatever it is you're teaching and within those folders I have more folders for the different areas of the curriculum. It just makes it so much easier if you're trying to find a specific lesson or worksheet that it's all nice and organised. This kind of links to my next point which is to invest in some storage. Really think about where you're going to keep everything. Now this can be difficult if you are a student and you're living in student accommodation and you don't have like your own space. Luckily I was actually staying at home during my time in university so our garage has become the dumping place for all of my teaching stuff. The great thing about studying teaching at uni is that it is super practical. I know that we were given a lot of sample worksheets and freebie posters. Don't end up like me where you just put all of your worksheets and leaflets into the same place in a big pile with no organisation whatsoever and then you end up never looking at it again. I would recommend taking photos of things where possible because digital storage is just so much easier. I really recommend the big plastic storage tub from places like B&M, Home Bargains, The Range or even just Amazon. The way that I currently organise my physical storage is that I have a few of those big storage tubs. I have one for first level, one for second level. I think I have a generic one which has like seasonal things in it and things for different topics because you could be doing an Egyptian topic 
you know, with the younger primary or the upper primary, so I keep those in there. And then I also have one for all of my display resources for my classroom as well. And my first and second level boxes I have sorted again into the curricular areas. I have one of those Ziploc bags for kind of each area. I also have a few big ring binder folders as well, which I keep in my room, which have a lot of different worksheets and fast finishers in them as well. My next tip relates to taking notes at university. While I was at uni, I ended up with loads of notepads from different lectures, tutorials, modules, as well as notepads for placements. There is a big difference between taking notes from your modules, which are gonna help you to write your assignments, and taking notes of things that are gonna help you when you go into your teaching career in the future. You do not need to hold on to notepads with pages and pages of educational theory written in them, because I can promise you that you're probably never going to look at them again. Maybe have a specific notepad that is just for ideas and inspiration for your teaching. I definitely preferred writing notes in lectures as opposed to typing them on my laptop. Now, since I left uni, I actually invested in an iPad Pro. If you've not seen my video all about my iPad, then make sure you go and watch it. And I would definitely recommend that for note taking at uni because you get the benefits of handwriting, but it also keeps everything digitally so you don't have to carry around lots of notepads. The next tip is something that I really advise, especially when you're on placements, and that is to network. Make sure you're keeping a note of people's names or organizations that come in to speak to you while you're at uni. It is so important to build positive relationships with your fellow students as well, because you never know when you might be applying for a job somewhere and you might come across these people again, or when you might want to reach out to someone. Which again, links to my next tip, which is something that I really wish I did while I was at university, and that is to start a teaching Instagram and a teaching Twitter. I don't know if this is something that has just grown and grown over the last few years, but I follow so many amazing creators on Instagram. There is a brilliant community of teachers on there that share ideas and inspiration, but as well as getting ideas and inspiration, it is a really nice way to document your teaching journey. So if you haven't already, then make sure you get on there. If you don't already follow me on all of my teacher socials, then I will link them down below. My username is Miss Ross Teach. Feel free to comment your handles down below and I'll go and try and follow as many people as I can. My next tip is to use the time that you have to explore areas of interest. It might not feel like it right at the moment for you, but looking back on my time at uni, I just had so much time. Bit of a disclaimer on this one, that's obviously going to depend on your living circumstances. I know that a lot of students are mature students who might have a young family or other responsibilities. If you are one of those people, I take my hat off to you because I honestly don't know how you manage through your teaching degree. It is such a demanding job, but from my point of view, as a young adult who is still living at home, I definitely had so much time that I wish I'd used more wisely. As teachers, we are expected to be continuously updating our skills. You don't always have to go and read some ancient academic journal. There are so many great blogs, online courses and videos that you can watch now online that can be so beneficial for your practice. Make sure you take advantage of opportunities provided by the university. Things like listening to talks from guest speakers. I think that at my uni they offered first aid training. Things like placements abroad. These things are ultimately going to make you more employable and develop your skills to make you a better teacher as well. And my final tip is to make note of any of the training courses that you've done, especially on placement if you attend any staff training events. This is going to be really helpful when you're writing your application in the future and it's going to be good practice as well because it's something that you're going to have to do throughout your teaching career so it's a good habit to get into early. That is all my tips and advice for you guys today. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please make sure you give this video a like because it lets me know that you would like to see more uni related content. Hopefully you'll be able to take on board some of my advice and learn from the mistakes that I made. Make sure you comment down below if you have any tips that you feel I didn't mention in this video. It would also mean the absolute world if you could subscribe to my channel. If you are currently studying or about to start studying a degree in teaching, please comment down below, introduce yourself, let me know where you're going to be studying and good luck. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you all in my next video. Bye!